I coached in the Big Ten, and we had a couple of times during my tenure there, and we were part of a national championship team, part of a celebrated class. Uh, we didn't have there what we had here this year. When I got a call saying, it's 7.30 in the morning, and you would not believe what, what I'm witnessing, this, the line of students wrapped around all the way from the ticket window behind the arc. I said, no way. And we made a point to make sure that we weren't above the fray. We got out and, and were there to let them know how much we appreciated and needed and supported what they were doing and wanted them to feel a part of what we were doing. And they did. the nice thing was they did. There was a relationship that was cultivated which further endeared our team to our fans. And without a shadow of a doubt, we had a home court record that was directly related to the phenomenal support that we got from everyone, starting with and led by our students. Prior to the 2010-11 season, San Diego State had had eight sellouts in the history of Viejas Arena. By early February, the Aztecs had played in front of 10 capacity crowds in a row. The all-time single-season attendance record shattered in just 12 games. San Diego State basketball was on the map. Known as much for their play on the court as the home court advantage created primarily by the student body known simply as the show. Gecko man, that means poster heads that uh, some of whom are faculty members here that, uh, that, that nobody knows but us as to who they are. It means guys painting their face and, and making sure they get the same seat for every game because of whether it's superstition, because they want to be on TV, because they, whatever it is, it was absolutely fantastic. Jumping up and down, cheering us on, running up and down the stairs. They're just fun um, shows. Like, you just gotta watch them and come to the game and see it for yourself. They're the best in the country. Each game, they were there. Even on the road, they were heard. We were playing, you know, off their energy when we were back at home. Uh, we didn't want to let them down. You know, and all year long, we called them our sixth man. You look over there and, and you see somebody giving you a fist. I'm saying, come on, DJ, you got it. That extra adrenaline, uh, you know, run kicks in and uh, you're able to push through. They're our six men. They travel everywhere we go, you know. That's our heart and soul. We play for them. Ticket lines and campouts, usually the domain of blue blood programs of the ACC or the SEC, became commonplace on Montezuma Mesa. Wow, you know, growing up, that's what you hear about at Duke and North Carolina and schools like that. Uh, but for us to have a part of that and to see what's been going on around campus in this community, uh, to see that was definitely something special. I don't hear anything but noise. But when I came home after one game and Angie said, could you believe, you know, what the students and how they, I said, they were good, weren't they? She said, no, can you believe when they started jumping up and down, we believe that we will win the chant? out one game when they opened the door and saw the students flying in and sprinting down the steps to get those seats and I smiled as I saw it and I told our players that in the locker room before that game I said when you go out look around and see what you have created and smile because it's it doesn't happen everywhere and I've been around long enough to know that it doesn't and it's happened here this year's team, some way, somehow, worked on the hearts of our students and then this community to where they wanted to be here with them.